Okay, today I'm going to start uh, squeezing the pulp out of the jug, out of the bucket here. As you can see now, the bucket. This is uh, day four. It fermented for three days. A sludge here now, and boy, does it smell like alcohol. I spread out a a uh, shower curtain on my rug so it doesn't make a mess, and I can stir this up now. You can see that it's. That's the, that's the uh, must, and it's pretty much alcohol done already. Well, not done, it's some good, a lot of alcohol. Man, I can smell it. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this, I'm going to strain it. Now, you can either use cheesecloth, or you can buy one of these bags like this. It's very, very fine, so you can see through it right here. And you put this into the bag and squeeze out the juice and then dump the pulp. I also bought myself one of these little little uh, pressers with the bag that goes inside of it right here and I'll put the bag in there and then press it and the juice will come out here. Makes it a little easier. If it gets too thick you can try strainers to begin with or even coffee filters. Anyway if you're making a small batch or a big batch you want to strain the juice out. So that's my goal today is to strain the juice out from here and throw away the pulp and to put the juice into a nice big uh, water thing right here. My polar water jug. The cheapest way to get them is to buy the jug of water and use the water and then you save the jug. Ends up about five bucks for this instead of by paying $30 for one at the uh, wine store. So I'm going to wash this out with uh, Clorox, a little bit of Clorox and water. Sterilize it totally. And then I'm going to use sterilize this with a little Clorox and water. And then I'm going to, um, first of all, I'm going to uh, sterilize the jug, sterilize this, and sterilize this with just a little bit of Clorox, like a 10 to 1 solution. Uh, one part Clorox to ten parts of water, something like that, just to sterilize it. And I'll sterilize everything with my Clorox and water. Some people use Camden tablets. I don't need to do that. No, no. Clorox is cheap. It's right there, readily available, and it does the trick. So let me get that first. Okay. So. Put my garbage in here. Red garbage. This is my compost and my regular garbage. Okay, so now. I'm going to get the water a little hot here. I'm going to put my water in here. That's just enough water. A little bit of Clorox in here. Oh, oh, way too much Clorox. Way too much Clorox. More water. Came out too fast on me. Okay. These are pretty clean because I use them every year and I rinse them with Clorox and water before I put them away for the winter. So they're not bad. All right. So that's about to sterilize there. I'm going to sterilize everything. Sterilize everything. Which means all this stuff here, all is going to go in here. And I just pour this in here. water in there. Don't want any bacteria. Bacteria will make your wine go bad. Sterile, keeping it clean, clean, clean is the most important thing. And then get rid of the Clorox out of here now. No. Smell it. Still a little Cloroxy. Put more water in. Now 
Now, smells, there was no Clorox smell in that jug now. No Clorox smell. My funnel, my funnel's gonna get sterilized too. Everything in here now is being sterilized. Okay. Even this, let me bring this back over here now. And get this off of here. Put that in there, sterilize the bottom of that thing. This is pretty clean when I put it away. But still, you just wanna make sure the Clorox over it. Okay. So this is pretty good. And these you get at the store for about a, a dollar and a half. But you have to have one of these. And the bags you get at the wine store, too. It looks nasty because it's got all the stains on the black cherries last year and the other fruits that I used. Okay. And let's see. I had another bag. There's the other bag. Another bag just in case I need the other bag. Okay. That's the bag. Still sterilized. Here we go. Okay. And then this I'm going to put. This is all sterilized now. Put this in here and pour this in here. Wonderful Clorox. Nothing like it. You can't beat it. Okay. Now there's all our stuff. Ready to go. Okay? And put this on the edge here. All ready to go. And okay. That's how we begin that. Now. So get that out of the way. I'm going to pull this forward a little bit Ooh, so that can stay right there. And then, now this is all, now here we begin. This is the tough part now. Okay. I'm going to put my bag in here in my thing. Or you can just take your uh, regular bag here and fill it with your stuff down there, your must. It's called must. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to use these other strainers or not. I don't know. Put this aside right now. These can be put aside. Uh, put a little bit of water in this right here, right here. Take the top off. You fill it up to the water lines. Right there. Put the top back on it. This keeps the bugs out. This keeps the oxygen from coming in, but it lets the carbon dioxide go out. Put it into here like this. And now it's all ready to go in the top of the bottle when all the liquid is in there. So I'm going to put this aside now. That's ready to go. Okay, now comes the big part. Whew. Okay. Now, I've got my jug ready down here. I will put my funnel down here on my jug. Okay? Okay, so now I'm going to take a, a cup. I like to take a plain old drinking cup. Let me sterilize this too. You're right, you're right. A little bit of Clorox in this. Can't have any bacteria. In the cup, in the cup. Sterilize the cup. 
these I'll put aside over here. I might not need them. I might need them. You never know. This I know thing I will need, but you never know. I sometimes like that too. You can use this. I will use my thing. Or you can use cheesecloth. Okay, now that cup is sterilized. And the bucket here is sterilized again. Okay. So now, I will take my cup. I will reach down here and I will get a cup full of sludge. Here's my sludge. See my sludge from the wine thing. I put it over here in my... Tilt this up so you can see that a little bit better. Okay. In my squeezy thing. Get another cup. Now usually the top part here has got a lot of sludge on it. Because that all that floats up. So you get that liquid that heavy stuff off first. And then you do the rest of it. Okay. See? It's coming out cloudy liquid, but that's okay. Okay. If you want to do it with your bag, you just put the liquid in there and hold the bag over there. Like this. I'll show you with this one. In case you don't have a little machine like I do. Make a small batch. You put this in here like this. And you let it squeeze through. See that? You take the sludge and you get another uh, another um, container and you dump the sludge out. Dump it out. You won't be using this again, the sludge right here. Right here, you won't be using that. And that's the leftover pulp right there that you're gonna be throwing out, okay? And you don't throw it in your garbage or your sink because it might clog up your septic system. So if you want to do it this way with the bag, it takes longer, uh, but it's cheaper. Bag's like two bucks, and you just squeeze it, okay? You just take it and just keep putting liquid in here until, do another one for you to show you the squeegee here. Okay, another, another cup of the stuff. Put it in here. And then squeeze it. And every so often, when it gets so full of crud, you have to wash the bag. Okay. Then you take this. Upside down. Get rid of the sludge. See on the bottom. Flip it back. You want to keep as much sludge out of there as possible. You want that as clear as possible, your liquid. So I'm not going to use this. That's what I used to use and do it by hand. And then I thought, oh, I'm doing so much wine. I'm going to buy this machine here. I think it was $75 or something or other. I don't know what it was. But it's a whole lot easier to do it this way. Now, when it gets up to the tilt it here. Get the, now I take this. And, okay, there. tilt it down, and there's my jug. My sludge is going down. See, my sludge is going down. See? Okay. Then I take this, and I usually have Bruce here help me because I don't want to spill it. And I pour this into 
And I continued doing this, so now I've got my start of my wine right here, right here. When, I, this is, when this is all been strained and all in there, then I put my top, this thing, on the top of here and let it sit for two weeks, three weeks, and it'll bubble and it'll break down, it'll turn clear, and you keep doing this. Okay. It is now 10 after 10. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes. And out of all those berries that I had, the 16 pounds of berries, this is what came out in the sludge right here after I strained it. I cleaned up my straining stuff. Uh, I didn't even use the, I just pushed this. It was such clear because when you blend it in the blender like we blended it, it breaks it up so fine that the yeast, there aren't a lot of chunks in it. So there's not a lot of sludge. It's already into a liquid. So now here is the uh, empty bucket which I will wash out and I will start a new batch because I'm going to start a new batch. There's my thing and here is my beautiful, right there, my wine. My black cherry wine. Now I will put this stopper on here right now and hang on, let me put the stopper on here. Put this in. Push it down into the bucket. There we go. Okay. Now, now the bucket is sealed. The gallon is sealed. So now in about when that yeast in there starts eating the rest of the sugar in there and the rest of the uh, fine particles, the yeast will eat that and then as it eats that and converts it to alcohol, it will clear, it will clarify and the, you'll hear this start going blum, a blum, as the carbon dioxide goes out but no oxygen can come in so that you don't have any other bacteria coming in from the outside. Now I'll leave this for uh, probably three weeks and by the time, then the yeast that has uh, eaten up the sugar and whatever, these little particles in there, they'll eat it and then they'll die. And at the very bottom, you'll see a little bit of layer in two, two three weeks of dead yeast. Those are called the lees. This is called a carboy. It's actually a water jug from BJ's. And uh, so uh, then in three weeks, I will siphon this off into another container like this and then throw away the sludge on the bottom, which is just to be a little bit, which will be the dead yeast. And then we'll wait another three weeks. And it'll keep going, blah, 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 blah. And, it, and as it goes slower and slower and slower, blah, 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 blah. and eventually all the yeast will be, have eaten up the sugar and will have died. And then you put it in bottles. Or you can just drink it right then. Also, before I uh, uh, put the yeast in it three days ago, I measured the initial sugar content, and it was 1.1, 1.10. And after three days, the, al the yeast had made it enough alcohol, so it's 7% alcohol right now. You subtract, because I just put the uh, hydrometer in the... Uh, bucket before I siphoned off the uh, sludge and it was 103 and a before before three days ago it was 1.1 would now I put it into a carboy so uh, right now the alcohol content is seven percent it will get more probably up to ten percent in the next six weeks ten or eleven percent maybe even more